Welcome back to IGN Live at Gamescom 2015, presented by Homefront The Revolution. I'm Max Scova. With me is Hayden Blackman from Hangar 13. Hey. You guys just showed off Mafia 3. You just let that out of the bag and unloose just like last week? Yeah, that's right. Or just a couple days ago. Yeah. yeah. What, so what's the, what's the pitch? Elevator so pitch. So Mafia 3 is the hard-boiled story of a guy named Lincoln Clay who wages war against the Italian mob in 1968 in our fictionalized version of New Orleans. Now, there's, uh, there's kind of a shift going on here. People are kind of used to, to Mafia being this kind of like, you know, Godfather, Goodfellas kind of vibe. Right, right. And Lincoln's background's a little bit different, right? Yeah, you know, with Mafia 3, we really wanted to stay true to the things that we felt were important to the franchise. So a very immersive sense of time and place and stories that are really compelling and obviously compelling stories about organized crime, which for me is a, a personally fascinating subject. But we also wanted to kind of go beyond that rags to riches story of an Italian mobster kind of working his way up the ranks because, you know, we've already done that in the franchise. Right. So we focused on this new protagonist on Lincoln Clay, um, who is an orphan. He's been searching for a sense of family his entire life. Uh, he's a Vietnam vet. He comes back at the beginning of the game from Vietnam and, and falls in with the black mob and eventually finds that kind of sense of family there. But then it all gets taken away by the Italian mob and, and he has to kind of rebuild and wage war against the Italian mob. Yeah, in the process. And, and you've got this awesome backdrop of like, you know, post-Vietnam War. You've got the yeah. civil rights movement and it's the most corrupt city in America. So right. that. Uh, we've got <laughs> yeah. some, some gameplay clips if we want right. to take a look at those. Um, this is, uh, I'm, so I'm actually, uh, you know, full disclosure, I haven't played the previous Mafia games, and I feel sort of justified in that because the, the first one came out in 2002. Right, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's been yeah, a minute, you know? Yeah. Like, um, this is, you know, for people who also haven't been onto it, like, it's, it, this is a fresh start, yeah? Yeah, I mean, you know, again, if you're a fan of the franchise, there's going to be some ties back or some touchstones back. You know, we're still set in the same universe. Um, so Vito Scaletta, who was the main character in Mafia 2, comes back and plays a really integral role as kind of one of your lieutenants that you can recruit uh, throughout the course of the game. But again, we've moved forward in time. The tone is very different. It's much more hard-boiled. Um, you know, again, the city's very different. It's New Orleans. It's, a, it's an iconic southern city. And it's 1968. And as you mentioned, like, it's this backdrop of... of you know, racial tension and Vietnam and some major assassinations. And, you know, there's just a lot going on in yeah. the time period that makes it really robust. So. And now mechanically, it's it's open world game. It uh, is. Story yeah. driven. Yeah. Uh, so we, we kind of have three um, tenants there. So, one, yes, it is narrative driven. There is a strong narrative, but the narrative really uh, serves as like tent poles. And in between that, we allow the player to kind of go out and attack the mob and tear down the criminal hierarchy however they want and then kind of rebuild it. So, you know, they go out and they, they can, you know, explore that criminal ecosystem in, in a lot of different ways. Okay. Um, but then we're very much a cover shooter as well. So kind of the core combat is cover shooting. And then we have a really robust physics-based driving model that allows you to use the car as a weapon and really captures the feeling of late 60s action movies okay. like Bullet. Yeah. Awesome. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this. Can sure. we can queue up some clips? Um, yeah, so cover shooter. What's, what's going on? This is sort of like sort of quick time event-ish, but... No, like that's actually, that that yeah, that's, a, that's a melee attack in the game. So, okay. you know, Lincoln really, it, because of his training, um, because of who he is, he's able to kind of own the battlefield. That's another mantra that we have. So, again, the, the core mechanic is cover-based shooter, but um, we also have stealth mechanics in the game, and there's moments like that where you can kind of use melee um, as either a way to ambush somebody or as a panic button. If you come around the corner or you're out of ammo, you can use your melee in order to kind of get the drop on somebody. Um, and it is, you know, again, we are are not shying away from kind of that, this brutal combat that, you know, um, we feel really captures the time period as well. So. Okay, and how much, uh, how much kind of exploration, sort of like lateral? There's a know? ton, like, okay. and, and again, that uh, the, in the demo that we've been showing here at Gamescom, um, Lincoln takes out a drug den called the Cistern. But that is not a mission in the game. That's an objective that the player can kind of set for themselves as they discover that these hideouts exist, right? So right. you go into the world, you can interrogate drug dealers to find out where the location of this place is. There's multiple different entrances to it. And then eventually you can, you know, take it over okay. and, and operate it on your own. All right. I want to see more of this. Keep, keep yeah, them sure. rolling. Keep them coming. Um, this is... I, I'm. The driving, it looks very, I'm going to be honest, it looks yeah. very kind of cartoony. Like, it's very, like, I like that you're, you know, tagging bullet because that's sure. uh, a great example. Uh, it seems like, like, what's going on? You've got, like, a drift meter. This is kind of like 
really, really pretty crazy taxi looking right now. Well, that, so that's one of our interrogation mechanics. So okay. there's lots of different ways to interrogate guys in the game. And every time you interrogate somebody, you learn another piece of information about the criminal ecosystem in the world. So one way is to do kind of brutal, physical, in your face uh, interrogations. Another way is that, that you know, um, we call drive like a madman mechanic, right? Okay. So, and basically you're, you're causing this guy to, you know, lose his cool and eventually spill all the information that he has. You got a sweet jump so, here. Yeah. Okay, I got you. So, um, and then, you know, you have a choice to kind of kill and spare this guy. Um, in some of the other clips I know that we have, you know, you see a lot of car combat. And that really, we wanted the car to become a weapon uh -huh. to make you feel like you could, you know, one of my favorite moves is this car torpedo where you, you know, kind of send it at some enemies and you go diving out. And then the, you know, car will uh, take out the enemies and okay. sometimes explode. Uh, so. Now, one thing I'm noticing in this, you've got these kind of like these indicators above enemies' heads, yeah. uh, like little lightning bolts. What, what does sure. that uh, symbolize? So right now, what that's symbolizing is uh, that they're aware of you and that okay. they're um, and that ties you know, with becoming the nervous. Stuff, and kind of it's not just stealth, but it's also if you're out of place. So one of the things that were, is really important to us is this idea of public-facing hideouts or hideouts with public fronts. So again, in the demo that we're showing here at Gamescom, we have a drug den that's hidden underneath a jazz club. If mm. Lincoln goes in there and he's waving his gun around or even just looks out of place, the patrons in there might get nervous and call the cops or alert the mobsters. If the mobsters spot him wandering around, you know, they're going to get suspicious, mm -hmm. right? Because they know they're at war with this guy and, you know, he, he stands out a little bit, right? So okay. that's so really just kind of their, their like, alert. Here, this, is, this is kind of sort of suspicious behavior right there. Like that's right, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're walking up against a guard, you know, the guard standing there at the back door. And as soon as he spots Lincoln, he knows that, you know, uh, the, the, this is something shady going on and he needs to, to kind of step forward and uh, try and scare Lincoln off and obviously that didn't work. Okay. Uh, so you're obviously, you, New Orleans is a, a kind of brand new city. Uh, open world games have definitely like come a long way since the, the last Mafia uh, mm -hmm. entry. Like, um, are we going to see like kind of a like a broader exploration? How Like how big is the city? Like how kind of I feel like you know, the, it, you know, Mafia does have like sort of a linear story approach, right. but like you're, you know. Yeah, and again, that that we're not shying away from that. We still have that very strong narrative, but within the context of that, the, these kind of tentpole moments, the player can create their own experience, kind of their own story. Um, in terms of kind of the city, the thing that we really focused on was density of activity, like how much you know cool content can we put mm -hmm. in kind of every square block? And you saw some of that in that you know walk down Bourbon Street earlier, um, and that's why we have this criminal ecosystem, and so you can go out and you can explore back alleys and find, you know, criminal rackets going on. Um, there's, but then, there's the uh, torpedo movement. Yeah, there was, that was awesome. the torpedo thing, yeah. Um, but then we also focused on things like the environments, right? So, again, because it's New Orleans, we have everything from, you know, Bourbon Street to swamps, the, the bayou. We've got this kind of rich upper-class enclave. We've got some, you know, kind of poorer neighborhoods. So it feels, in my mind, incredibly diverse and rich. Now, we saw, uh, we saw the big reveal trailer. It has yeah. a very terrifying alligator in it. <laughs> right. uh, I, might, I, I would be really upset if there weren't alligators in the, in the game. Is there other kind of flora and fauna we can? Yeah, I can't. Say? I can't confirm any details there okay. yet. We're not re releasing any information there, but I can tell you, you know, obviously the bayou is an important part of the the, the ecosystem for okay. us. Okay. So, yeah. so this this seems like I mean, it's obviously it's a it's a massive game, and it's kind of hard to pull out like a vertical slice like this sure. and be like, you know, here's what we're looking at, right. but. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm guessing this is going to be like a kind of a, a robust experience for everyone to kind of play around with. Yeah, that's what we hope. I mean, again, I think the combination of, of having this very curated story and, and this character in Lincoln who goes through this kind of journey, um, but then also the ability to kind of customize your experience with your lieutenants and uh, how you approach tearing down and rebuilding this criminal empire, I think will give every every player, you know, kind of their own unique experience. Gotcha. Now, I, one thing I, I've, I've noticed in the trailer at the end, we kind of get a look at, at the lieutenants and yeah. they seem like kind of a kind of a ragtag bunch. Like they don't look like they're in the same gang. They look kind of like. A, yeah, absolutely. That's totally true. So, you know, Lincoln, um, one, one of the things I think is really important about the Mafia franchise is it's really about gifted antiheroes. Uh, and Lincoln's got a couple different gifts, right? So one of his gifts is, is again, his training as a Vietnam vet. That he, he actually enlisted and he, he spent three years and he was in some special forces group um, in Vietnam. So that that's one of the things that kind of gives him an edge. But the other is partly because of his background and, and kind of growing up in an orphanage and spending all this time seeking for you know, family, he has this ability to bring together these disparate groups of people. So these mm. three lieutenants, one of them is an Irish gangster, another is a, a Haitian uh, crime lord, and the third is actually uh, Vito, right. the, the Italian uh, uh, gangster from Mafia 2. But all three of them feel kind of put upon by the reigning mob boss of the city 
And, you know, it's kind of that enemy of my enemy is my friend thing. Gotcha. Uh, so Lincoln's able to kind of recruit them with the promise of, you know, hey, I'll, I'll, I'm in charge, but I'll, I'll share the city with you if you all agree to work with me. Gotcha. And that's actually an important part of the game. You know, balancing this relationship between these three characters is actually really important. And, and the player can decide to, as he kind of takes over the city, can decide who he doles out different hideouts and different districts to. Now, would it be safe to assume that they kind of, they each have their kind of own sort of like, like separate missions or they have kind of like little side well, stories or they, they do have side stories and they have uh, various activities that they can, you know, kind of unlock for you uh -huh. and open up to you. The other thing that they really provide, uh, which is, you know, to me, one of the interesting features of the game is what we call services. So um, these are kind of favors that uh, you can call in from these guys. So uh, they get more powerful as you give them more powerful or sorry, more territory over time. Mm. So Burke, for example, uh, has an in in the in the with the police. So you can actually bribe cops to leave you alone for a period of time nice. or call off cops if you're in trouble. Uh, it's 1968. So right. uh, at least at the beginning of the game, you have to use a payphone to do that type of stuff. <laughs> but but it's it's really great because you'll spot it. You know, you'll be running from cops and you'll spot a payphone and you can kind of leap out and, and call Burke and then he'll call off the cops for you. Right. Uh, but again, those things become more powerful over time as long as you're giving territory to your lieutenant so you're kind of balancing like you know how powerful do i want to get versus how happy do i want to keep all three of them okay are there are there more lieutenants besides just these now we're focused on those three we okay. really wanted to build you know again a, a really strong core cast of characters there's a couple other uh really important characters in the game that uh, we're not you know divulging any information about at this point but um some characters that kind of help comment on uh, the way that Lincoln is progressing through the story okay. and provide a lot of context for, for what's going on and, and help him on his mission in different ways. Okay. Um, now, you mentioned you mentioned payphones, and that kind of made me think, like, it seems very grounded. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you've got you've got water. Are there, are there going to be boats in the game? Yeah. Okay. Right. So one of the things we are showing at Gamescom here, too, is uh, as you go into this drugged in the cistern, each of our hideouts supports multiple entrances, and one of the entrances you can discover through either exploration or interrogations is the ability to come in by boat. Oh, um, nice. And again, it is our, our fictionalized version right. of New Orleans, so we're taking a lot of creative license. Okay. And in this case, you know, we have a, a whole series of tunnels underneath the city that used to be used by bootleggers and whatnot. Now, what about, are there going to be, are there planes, are there aerial vehicles? No, we're or? very focused, okay. because our driving gotcha. model so is so kinda, solid, yeah. Yeah, we're focused on cars first yeah. and foremost, and then it's boats. Boots on the ground. Yeah. Uh, when are we, we going to see this? When 2016. 2016? Yeah, Do you yeah. have like a ballpark, which end of the uh, uh, not yet. We're okay. not, not revealing any okay. information. Yet. Okay. Yeah. Well, it looks it looks awesome, and I'm cool, you know I'm dying to see more. Um, right. So thanks so much for for joining us. We've got for lots me. more Gamescom stuff coming up. So don't go anywhere. <laughs>